I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council meeting, uh, October the 1st, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Burr. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. All right. We'll do our invocation tonight. I will be doing it. If you don't mind standing, please. Heavenly Father, we're gathered here today for our city council meeting as we determine how to move Nucleot forward in the best direction possible. Lord, bless this meeting and bless all those who have attended or watch online and bless everyone in the city and uh, protect our first responders that go out to do their day-to-day -day duties. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll say the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Berner. Action on the minutes. Action on the minutes, yes. Is there a motion to accept the special meeting, special meeting minutes for 9, 12, 18? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Oh, you have something to say about it? I said second. Oh, why well, say <laughs> discussion? Uh, no, no discussion, Mrs. Berner. Okay. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Shammy and Mr. Cook should abstain. Uh, yes. They, they that's were what I just Sorry. Yeah, that's what I So he can't second it either. He wasn't there? No, Cobb. He didn't second it. Cobb seconded it. So it's oh, fine. I thought. I no, abstain. Okay. Abstain. Okay. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Can't start. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Minutes accepted? Board. To zero. All right, and any action or any uh, motion on the regular meeting minutes? So moved. Nice. All right. Is there a second? Is that Mr. Cobb? Cobb yeah. second. Yeah. Mr. Cobb's on it tonight. Uh, Mr. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice <clears throat> Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Minutes accepted, 6-0. All right. Then communications, there are none tonight. Mr. Bridge for our city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Um, under informational items, new playground dome, it is actually officially open. We got a ribbon cutting ceremony on Friday, September 28th at, 20, uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, Vice Mayor Lindsay was there on behalf of City Council. Uh, he cut the ribbon and gave a great speech. Um, I spoke. Um, I would, would like to go on record and thank our street department, Howie Kiko, and some great uh, city employees that we have. They literally, literally came in here Thursday morning at 5.30 a.m. to start that cement sidewalk to go to the uh, dome so we can have it open for the ribbon cutting ceremony. So hats off to those guys oh, wow. for uh, showing up and going the extra mile. We also had a fantastic turnout. We had people, uh, the Clark County uh, um, administrator was there, as well, as well as the assistant administrator and their PR person. So we had a great uh, uh, attendance through Clark County, um, and we could not be happier with that turnout. Madison Street School, I'm still working on some asbestos removal options. Uh, when I'm done with that, there will be more information to come. Union negotiations, we are currently underway. We have our next union meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Um, it has taken up a great deal of my time over these past two weeks, um, so hopefully we'll get it done soon. Um, I do have one more thing to add that I sent out the memo today to city staff that's not on this manager report. We will be closing the city building uh, Friday at noon due to the Heritage of Flight Festival Street closings. That is all I have for the city manager's report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Mr. Rich? Nope. Thank you for closing down early for our employees. No problem. All right, moving on, comments from members of the public. If anyone has comments from members of the public, they may speak now. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. Please state your name and address. Any comments? Linda Eggleston, Noah Kowski, 317 South Main Street, New Carlisle. 
I just wanted to give you an update on the uh, community garden. Uh, today, we signed a lease with the Tecumseh Local School District for 9.4 acres of land uh, where Westlake Elementary School used to be. Uh, it comes with some a building, gas, electric, a well, water connections. <laughs> And um, we're working with the school district to set up some programs. And the other piece of information, uh, we've applied for a $30,000 grant and we've made it through round one. And they'll be coming out to look at the space to see if we've got what we need. We're looking to build a greenhouse so that we can teach kids during school year about growing and get a <clears throat> head start on the growing season uh, with the gardens. Uh, there is a community invited cleanup day, fall cleanup day on October 13th from 10 to 2. And I would invite anybody to come to that and see what we're doing and help us get the garden beside the Madison Street School in shape for the spring. Ms. Eggleston, may I ask you a question, please? Sure. Uh, so are you guys moving over there, or are you going to keep both locations? We're going to keep both for right now. OK. Uh, we, we need to do some serious planning <laughs> on how we, how we do long-range development of that okay. piece of land. Now, is there anything that council would need, maybe it's a better question for Mr. Bridge, or anything council would need to do to help move it along for them, or is, is it already zoned properly? There's nothing that we need to do? Uh, as far as our new spot? Yes. Um, I think when you're just ready to build that greenhouse, just come see me and we'll get you permitted. Right. No problem. Okay. All right. yeah. Mr. Lowry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple quick questions. When you do move over to the new property, and that's a lot of, that's a lot of land, does it give me an issue? And I'm not trying to, to rain on your parade, but are you guys going to have a problem taking maintaining it? Maintaining no, we've problem? we've got a source of a tractor at this point. Okay. All right. Yeah. Also, also the uh, I know you had brought brought up the bees a few times, and I know I'm a I'm a big fan of that idea. I think it's a really great idea for the city, and I think there's some other people up here that, that might be interested as well. I don't want you thinking that me personally was we were ignoring the uh, no the the interest in it. Uh, for me, I just want to put that on the back burner for now as far as the city wrapping up its finances for the year and okay. moving into next year. I think that would be something we should look into at that time. Um, I, would, I would point out that in the ordinances, there is nothing that restricts having bees in the city. Um, and based on that, I am reinstituting talks with the woman who has donated who has offered to donate the bees and help us build the hives and work with her as to when the best time for that to happen is um, but if you if you look at the ordinances there's nothing in there that restricts the keeping of bees within the city Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public at this time? Please state your name and address, please. Thank you, Mayor Reynolds, uh, Vice Mayor Lindsay, and members of the council. My name is Barry Sheets, and I am the policy advisor for Citizens for Community Values. We are a nonprofit public policy organization based in Columbus, Ohio, and are associated with uh, Family Research Council. Uh, on September the 24th of this year, uh, the members of the city council uh, were sent via email a copy of a letter, joint letter from our organization and from the Alliance Defending Freedom, uh, a nonprofit public interest uh, legal association. And I would like to, at this point, read that letter into the record for the members of the council. It's regard to uh, proposed ordinance 18-25. No. Dear council members, we recently learned that New Carlisle is considering adding sexual orientation, sexual preference, and gender identity expression. And I note that none of those particular phrases are defined in the proposed ordinance. 
Uh, this does create problems because of, of numerous interpretations of what those particular phrases mean. And to add those as classifications to your non-discrimination laws. In the past several years, many legislative bodies have considered similar proposals and have rejected them. In fact, from 2015 until today, legislatures in 25 states voted down scores of proposals that would have added sexual orientation or gender identity to state laws. Why? Because these laws unconstitutionally threaten basic freedoms of conscience, religion, speech, and association, violate privacy rights, and expose citizens to significant legal and financial liability. Lawmakers seek to preserve the freedoms of every person to speak, teach, and live out one's beliefs in public life without fear of government censorship or coercion. But where sexual orientation and gender identity laws are enacted, they increase government regulation and advance government discrimination against people who willingly employ and serve everyone for seeking to peacefully live and work consistent with their beliefs. There are many good reasons not to enact these type of laws. These reason, three reasons are particularly noteworthy. This type of ordinance is unnecessary because the citizens of New Carlisle are already tolerant and welcoming to all people. And I noticed that as I drove into town. A uh, very big welcoming sign, uh, a number of, uh, of businesses. Uh, you know, it's, it's a great little place. Uh, you've got light, nice, clean, quiet streets, um, small business, homes, families, uh, kids playing in the sidewalks. It's a beautiful little town. Uh, and I saw many signs that uh, noted uh, welcoming and affirming. Uh, so I, I believe that there's, there's quite a bit of tolerance in this town already. Secondly, these ordinances in other communities have proven divisive and have had a serious negative impact on the religious freedom and the free speech rights of business owners, religious ministries, and churches. Adding gender identity to non-discrimination ordinances forces schools, organizations, and businesses to allow biological males to access women's showers, locker rooms, and restrooms, which jeopardizes the privacy interests and safety of women and girls. Simply put, these type of ordinances trample First Amendment freedom, strip away every citizen's right to privacy, and unnecessarily infringe on residents' rights to run their organizations and businesses consistent with their mission and values. Uh, these sexual orientation and gender identity laws do not protect equality before the law, but instead pick and choose which citizens enjoy constitutionally protected freedoms and which ones don't. Um, and it, the letter goes into some more uh, bullet points on those three points, which in the interest of time, I'll pass by. I do have a copy of this letter that I will be submitting to your clerk uh, for entrance into the record. Uh, so I'll just wrap with the conclusion uh, that sexual orientation and gender identity laws raise many constitutional concerns. If enacted in New Carlisle, it will be used to compel businesses to speak messages they do not want to speak and to support expressive events in violation of their conscience. It will also force schools, businesses, and other organizations to open their showers, locker rooms, and other facilities to both sexes, creating situations that will violate the privacy rights of women and girls and place their safety at risk. The proponents of these laws would have the cities like yours jeopardize the rights of its citizens in these ways, even though no systemic, systemic pattern of invidious discrimination justifies a law like this. New Carlisle can respect the dignity of all its citizens without enacting new laws that have devastating consequences for families, businesses, and people of faith. I thank you for uh, your tolerant uh, uh, listening to my comments, and I would be happy to take any questions, Council, if there, there are. Council, any questions? Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And as I said, I will submit a copy of this letter for your question. Thank you, sir. Any other comments from members of the public? You have five minutes. Mrs. McKenzie, do you mind stating your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Becky McKenzie, and I'm at 521 Hamilton Avenue. I'm really excited about this ordinance, so I'm pretty happy that it's going through the books. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McKenzie. Any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Craybacher. John Craybacher, 307 North Henry Street. Um, last meeting I brought up about the homeless in the New Carlisle Park. 
and Sergeant Underwood got back with me that Wednesday. And he said, and he said that they had found three homeless people. Because originally he said he didn't know of any complaints or anything. Now, he said that the deputy uh, that at night, he said that there, there were known people, whatever that means. And while the deputy was over there, um, he was approached by a couple of the neighbors. And the neighbors uh, said that, that they, did, they did not report him because they were afraid of retaliation. That's what I want to bring up with that word, retaliation. You know, when, when a crime happens or something happens that you see is wrong, you know, people are afraid to report them. And that's why we don't know that it happens, you know, no matter what it is. If you ever ride the train out of Cincinnati, out of uh, Chicago, they say if you see something, report something. And that's what, you know, that's what we should do. You know, if we see something that's wrong or that's concerned to a neighbor, neighborhood, you know, not, not say, oh, I'm afraid that they are going to come against me. You know, and so I think, you know, in this town, we're still afraid. We're, we're afraid that if we report something, something's going to come back on us. So I think we just need to open our eyes and be able to speak. Thank you, Mr. Craybarker. Mr. Mayor. Oh, I have one quick question, but this is for our deputy. This is in, with conjunction with Mr. Craybarker. When So people can submit anonymously, correct? Correct. Okay, um, so anytime you call into dispatch, you can, you can give your information and ask that it be kept anonymous, or you can opt not to provide any information at all, and just that way you don't have any possibility of your information being put out there. We also do have, I'd have to get some more from Sergeant Underwood, we have um, what's called hotspot cards which it's a pre-postage pre card that you fill out with um, just hot spot areas, drug areas, high crime areas. And I can see a Sergeant Underwood or myself can drop some off to the city building. And that way people could even pick those up anonymously. They get mailed in and they actually go directly to the road lieutenant, Lieutenant White. And then he sends out emails so there's no question of who sent this in and he sends them to us requesting extra patrols and to keep an eye on the right, area. Fantastic. Mr. Lindsay, you had a comment or question. Uh, Mr. Kraybacher, did the sergeant tell you what park these was in? New Carlisle. The New Carlisle Park? Yeah, New okay. Carlisle Park. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know if Rachel can expound on it. Any, I don't know if he talked to you that day or... Um, I know that he talked to Deputy Moody and Moody talked to me when um, I came in on Sunday. And he said that he's been driving his cruiser up there into the park and making contact with these people. And the problem is, is it's just that, that they are homeless. Yeah. And I don't think that they're staying here locally in New Carlisle. I think they're just loitering. And I mean, unless Mr. Bridge has has any uh, other advice as far as having them trespass, they're not committing any criminal acts. Now we're getting reports that they're using drugs or that they're drinking down there. But every time we've made contact, I don't know if they're hiding it somewhere. There are beer cans in the trash cans, but we cannot catch them in the commission of a criminal act, at which point we could criminally trespass them from the park. But unless there's some kind of, I don't know, ordinance or something within the city ordinances that says that they can be trespassed. Well, yeah, I mean, the parks close at dusk. Well, and they're usually, they're, normally when I go out there, come, come dust, they're usually gone. It's mostly during the day that we're having an issue. So they're just like moving through and stopping here for... They'll hang out there for one or two hours, just hang out. And there's about three homeless, and then they usually attract about four or five other people. So at any given point, there's anywhere from three to six of them sitting at the picnic tables there. Okay. And, um, and we, we do. We go out there and make contact, and we talk to them. They know that we're keeping an eye on the area. We've gotten a couple of reports about supposedly two people who are staying here in Smith Park. We have not been able to locate anybody. Those, that's just something a citizen has called and reported. Um, but Deputy Gonzalez, he try, drives the back path a few times every night. Okay. I always come out here by the shelter house and do reports and, and try to sit around here at, in the evenings. Deputy Gonzalez and I check the bathrooms usually around 10 o'clock, make sure nobody's inside. Um, but beyond that, we've not found any evidence or tents or beer cans okay. of anybody actually living here in Smith Park. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Craybacher. I had no idea this was going on until so, uh, you brought it up the first time. Interesting. All right. Any other comments from members of the public? Hearing none. Moving on. Committee reports. We have none tonight. Resolutions. Mrs. Berner. All right. We have one resolution. It's an intro in action this evening. Resolution 18-14R. Introduction public hearing in action tonight. A resolution adopting a capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. 
Mr. Mayor. Okay. Mr. Vice Mayor Lindsay. I move to adopt resolution 18-14R. Second. And an explanation of this resolution. This is our yearly housekeeping uh, ordinance that we do. What it does is uh, three months prior to us submitting our formal 2019 operating budget, we have to come together as a group and put what we call together a capital improvement plan. What that is, is a five-year plan of the big capital purchases that we are going to purchase over, again, those five years. Anything that is capital has to be over 2,200. We had a great work session on this um, two weeks ago. So it was uh, available for public inspection for the past couple weeks, and now it's up for vote for council. Council, any comments, questions? Mr. Bridge. As always, uh, just to make sure, this is just a wish list, nothing set in stone with these. Nope. That's always like to clarify. Yep. So, Basically, what public. you mean by that, if we have to go and we start doing our numbers for our 2019 operating budget, this can be amended due to the available of funds. Any other comments, questions? Nope. Mrs. Burner. Okay. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Resolution accepted. Six zero. Yes. Ordinances. Mrs. Burner. I need to have a motion to um, change the agenda. It should say public hearing and action tonight, and instead of All intro that. and action. All right. Is there a motion on the floor to change introduction and action to public hearing and action? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Comments? Nope. Mr. Burner. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. All right. Changing the agenda is accepted, six to zero. Okay, ordinance 18-25, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance amending chapter 246, employees generally, chapter 240, citizens participation plan, chapter 628, fair housing and employment, Chapter 636, Offenses Relating to Persons, and Chapter 812, Cable Communication Systems of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle to adopt comprehensive non-discrimination provisions for the City of New Carlisle. Council. Is there a motion? Here I'll, make, I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Rich. Uh, explanation of this ordinance, this would just update our non-discrimination uh, policies uh, for a comprehensive uh, non-discrimination policy. Um, not all of this ordinance is in here because it's only the part that we're editing. And um, that's the point why we're here. Right. Council, any comments, <coughs> questions? Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chair, why would you have one? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bridge, and I'll, I'll be honest, I don't want to lie, I was thrown off by the wording on the, on the front of the agenda tonight. I thought this was at the next meeting, so I'm a little behind on this, and I apologize. Um, I thought it was going to be introduced at the next meeting. Uh, but, Mr. Bridge, you say that this is, is this all updated as far as, I mean, is everything that's in here in front of us changed from what was yeah, Equality Springfield actually went through our, non our sections of our code that dealt with uh, situations like this mm -hmm. and actually um, did the work for us. And Lynette and I decided to just put it in front of council so we can have a comprehensive uh, non-discrimination policy. But again, it was done by a very uh, reputable organization within Equality Ohio, the Springfield Division. Okay. So the things that are in front of us now, like in some of the sections in here, they're not, they're not in what we have currently? Sure, yep. Okay. Yep, so anything that's gonna be bold is added. Anything that has a strike through is taken out. So basically you're just updating your non-discrimination policy to allow people who may not be, um, or may have different lifestyles than most people to be protected in New Carlisle. Okay, so um, I was, if we were to look at, uh, let's see, it doesn't, 
that's a page. No, it would be under, let's see here, I guess it would be under section G if I'm reading, or reading the layout of this right. Uh, public, uh, G. public accommodation. Yeah, public accommodation. Oh, okay. Where were you at, sir? I'm sorry. He's on the third page. <laughs> public, yeah. There's no page number, sorry. Yeah, I don't have that one down. <laughs> public accommodations, G. At the bottom of the third page. Yeah, very bottom. Which, what section are you under, sir? It would be, I'll help you out. Right here. It's going to be under. I gotcha. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's just know. the third page. Yep. It, none of it's section numbers. Well, yeah, I guess the whole section. section. So you're under, you're under chapter 246, employees general. Okay. So public accommodations, and the way I read this is it's saying that if someone identifies, say, male or female, that they want to go into the opposite restroom facility, they can do so. Um, yeah, I would assume so. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I was reading that the way I thought I would. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. Council? Oh. This is going to be. Oh. So. What he said? Mm -hmm. I don't think he said it right. Okay, let me say it again. If, if, um, if you want to address it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let me see if I say it again. If, if there's a person who is born female but identifies as a male and wants to go into the, let me see, I'm female. into the female restroom, this allows them to do so without any discrimination, per se, or rules or guidelines against that. You know what I'm saying? I know you, what I'm trying to say. Go for it. You know I, think, I, think, I, I think I get what you're saying. If, if someone's born biologically a male, male and they become female and, they, the, the, right. and then they identify as female, then they could, sorry, fly slant on my mouth, use the female restroom. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank Make you. sure I was following. No, that's right. They're just getting a little confused myself trying to say it. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Thank you. That was it. Perfect. And that also includes churches, small businesses, uh, uh, schools. Yes. Yes. Right. I mean, this is this would be under employees generally, so it would just apply to people who work for the city. So this is not something that's going to say, "Oh, Lee's, you have to now." This particular section is under Chapter 246. No, I'm sorry. This one's under fair housing and employment. Yeah, right. that's everybody. So um, it would allow people to use the bathroom of their choice. Is there any exemption in here for church? No. Because like, if I were to work for the Catholic Church or mm -hmm. the Presbyterian or Methodist Church, I would sign a, uh, what would you call it? Waiver. Like a morality clause. And that would, like, it says like you would subscribe to working at this nonprofit, this church, and you would uphold the views of the Catholic Church, and that they were, if and this were to go into effect, uh, then that if that if that individual decided that they no longer subscribe to the teachings, they would be protected under, underneath this ordinance, even though it's a private organization and a church, which would be my, I'll just be straightforward. It's my biggest issue, is I think that the government shouldn't tell churches what they should do or anybody what they should do. Well, there might be people out there that don't think the church should be able to, have to discriminate against someone because of the lifestyle they choose. Well, uh, so it goes both ways. I, I, I see it goes both ways. Trust me, I do. Sure. Uh, and this is a very sensitive topic. It is. It's very, it is. very tough. <clears throat> uh, end but, of the day, it's policy, so it's yeah, your guys I know. to decide. And I, I know, I, I, trust me, I understand. Mm -hmm. Like, I, People have been so rude about these things in the last 10 years, and, and I totally understand. I just look at it as if there's no exception for churches, it, it's it, it's if it, it, with my vote it would be a no because I want to make sure that the government doesn't tell a church what to do, which I know it's a reverse argument than what you're normally used to hearing when they say, well, the church doesn't tell government what to do. I don't want the government to tell the church what to do, especially in this case. But it's okay for someone to sit there and say you're not coming in here because you're gay. I and that if if you're an employee of the church, that's up to the church to decide. Out of their mor religious morality, the religious exemption is huge. So do you think it's okay for people to be discriminated against because they're different than the status quo? No. Uh, matter of fact, I'm actually engaged to an African-American woman. I've been places where we have been discriminated against. Uh, I remember the first time going on a date with her. It was, uh, I got, we got called names and people pointed at us and it was definitely different. And we still get it. So no, I 
don't support discrimination. However, when it comes to a religious institution, and the religious institution chooses how they choose to use their religious philosophy. And you have very liberal Catholics, which, uh, and other metropolitan churches that support yeah. gay marriage, and <coughs> support uh, transgender rights and uh, lesbian rights, and then you have churches that are Pentecostal, or mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Presbyterian, I think they endorsed Gay marriage. I'm not sure, but like other religious organizations, that's where I stand. Is, is the religious freedom? Okay. So I have a tough question. Where is this council going to protect your city manager? Anyone? I missed the question. Sexual orientation discrimination. If this does not pass, what protections are in here for people who may come into the city who may identify as, you know, gay or homosexual or lesbian? besides myself or the next person coming into this town. I'm just keeping it honest and open. I think everyone has their own viewpoints that like the church I knew was going to come up, but there's other sides of this other than the church that need to be addressed. But at the end of the day, it is policy, so it is your guys' decision. I, we knew, talking to Mr. Mayor about this, this was going to be a very hot topic legislation piece. But you, I think it's our due diligence to protect everyone regardless of how they identify or how they choose to live their life, as long as it's not detrimental or criminal. I think we all live, I, my personal viewpoint on it is, it is our responsibility to progress the society, not hold it back. Mr. Bur Mr. Lowry, you had something? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Oh, thank you. So, I mean, there's parts of, of this that I completely agree with, but there's also a couple parts that I don't agree with. I mean, cannot, could we maybe look at this and have a work session on it and, say, and, and just see where we all agree or disagree on which parts and, and come up with something possibly new? I, I would concur with you, Mike. <coughs> because I, I, Mr. Bridge, I agree with exactly what you were just saying. I mean, that I totally understand, but there's other parts that I don't agree with. So. Because there's a motion on a horrible vote, and then at the other business, you can make a motion for a work session on this topic. Okay. If, that, if that's what you prefer. Sorry. I'm not no, telling you what to do. I'm just I'm recommending it. Being as fair as I, I am. Council, any other comments, questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Yeah, you have no, more? Go ahead. Let me thank you for a minute. This also impacts uh, the school we have here in the city, correct? Yes. That's the way I read it when I read My through concern. it. Uh, the, I don't see how, and I'm all about government not overreaching their bounds and dictating to people what they can and can't do. Uh, I, for one, if I had a male teacher walk into my little girl's restroom when she was in there, I'm afraid we'd have a problem. Or vice versa, a female teacher walk into the boy's restroom with my little son in there, I think we'd have a problem. I don't. <coughs> I don't think that should be happening. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. We back, huh? You good? We're, we're good. Yeah. Okay. Never gets easier with that. Um, sorry, Jimmy. Um, for the. Um, uh, if you want to know, there it is. You were talking about words. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yeah, Vice Mayor Lindsay was. Sorry? Talking. Oh, Vice Mayor Lindsay was talking? Oh, Mr. Lindsay, you want to continue? Oh, Sorry. <laughs> it, it kind of went out the window. Okay. It? <laughs> so. All right. Any other comments? I would assume I'm done. <laughs> you got two motions on the floor, though. Right. Do we have two? Just the first one. We only have one motion. I got one. Bill Cook and then Mike Lowry. Did he make? Yeah. Did you get, did you get two? Yeah. So, yeah, we had the one to change the. Change the wording change on the, the wording. And now we're on the regular ordinance. That, the wording was 6 0. If there's no other comments. No, the ordinance. Why do I have the first and second? Uh, Mr. Mayor, how could uh, we take this? We, it's correct. We could. I mean, we were just I mean, in the possibility, but. Uh, we were talking and then they asked for questions. We could withdraw. We, we have three options. We've already got a motion. Yeah, yeah. We, we vote no, and then we bring it back to the uh, other business. Mm -hmm. And then we can motion for a work session to discuss this further detail. Okay. Right. I don't think they Any other comments? You can go down the line and vote. Are you still taking comments from the public, or is that? that that's passed, but okay. uh, sorry. Who's that? Um, Mrs. Berner, call the roll, please. Okay. Stop. 
Was Mr. Lowry? Mr. Cook. No. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. Mayor Reynolds. No. Mr. Shammy. No. Mr. Lowry. No. Okay. Ordinance fails. Other business, do you mind reading? Bye. Reading that. Yes. Other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. The crime watch meeting will take place October 10th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. The city offices will be closed on Monday, October 8th for Columbus Day. We have a motion to excuse Mr. Cobb from the previous vote. A motion to excuse Mr. Cobb. Second. Okay. No discussion? No. All right. Mrs. Burner. Okay. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. All right. Motion accepted 5 0. And Mr. Lowry, you had some things you wanted to discuss? Yes. I just wanted to go over a few things about the festival real quick since it's coming up starting this Friday. Um, it's the typical, you know, our typical festival, not a lot's changed, but there's just, you know, two things I did want to hit on was, I mean, it was new this year, I don't know if anybody's heard of it yet, uh, we're calling it the mile of food. And what that is, is uh, it is exactly a mile from the intersection of Main and 571 out to the turn to the Indy Barnard Memorial Airport. And what the idea is, is to get people to bring canned goods on perishable items. We're going to start lining them up on the yellow line out 571 to the airport. Uh, realistically, I don't think we'll make it, but still, it's it's a good concept that I think that we want to try and grow uh, in years to come at the festival. And then all that food that will be donated will be lined up and give to the uh, pit, uh, food pantries and churches and any other organizations that put it to good use. Um, also, we're going to be doing something uh, at the at the parade, at the tail end of the parade. Uh, since unfortunately Mr. Ron Mannman passed away and, and everybody was aware of that, I think. Uh, we're gonna be doing a moment of silence on the, on the last fire engine at the parade. There's gonna be a banner on there, uh, memory of Ron Mannman for a true Pilot hero. So we'll stop the engine in front of the stage and have a moment of silence during uh, that part of the parade. So uh, they we're gonna be able to be there and uh, acknowledge all of uh, Ron's achievements since he was such a big part of Nicolau. But uh, other than that, the parade and the festival, uh, same as always, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, a lot of good time and fun. See everybody there. Yes. Fire? We hope it's good news. <laughs> Something you don't hear in every meeting. <laughs> kind of nervous to open the door. <laughs> I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, I should have, well, Jason. You know, I'm back. Yeah, okay. we tried my back. You know, I was doing the man thing. <laughs> Just going for it, all right? She, no, we she, were she, worried. She was, <laughs> she's not dead. <laughs> no, uh, real quick, uh, Mr. Lowry, I think it's amazing the uh, mile of food. I know Stephanie and I are looking forward to participating in what you told me. I thought it was really exciting. I, I got really excited, so we went and bought a bunch of canned foods for us. So I think it's going to be great. And then, so we'll, for Mr. Mammon, will we pause during the parade draft? I think I mean, we've never done it before, so okay. I mean, it's going to be hard to relay what we're doing to people that are probably over on. On uh, late, but uh, okay. you know our sound system goes pretty much end to end on main. Yeah. So I'm assuming the people that are past main are going to keep going. Okay. So I was making sure because I'm like, where do we like where did everyone stop? Right. Right. So, right. so uh, you know we'll we'll probably uh, Jeff Christmas usually announces the parade, so maybe yeah. we'll have him announce that throughout the parade. And maybe. Okay. You know, people. Yeah, I was just wondering. And then will it go, like, turn into the fire station or just stop, like, right there at no, the, uh, no, the sky? No, no, it'll do the full, like, it'll okay. do the full <laughs> parade route to, was it Lake to Clay, then to Clay to 571, I think. Yeah. Is yeah. yeah. So, it'll do the full parade. Oh, route. fantastic. All right. That's all and, uh, yeah, that, the mile food thing, that was a Marshall Gorby idea. If anybody knows Marshall, that's <laughs> definitely something that he can come up with. So. What is it, the Skipper and Gilligan's, what they call you guys? Yeah, yeah, the Skipper and the Gilligan. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Cook, you had something? Yes, with the recent events that uh, seemingly have occurred, I would love to see council entertain the thought of putting together a charter review committee 
I don't think I need to expand upon the reasons why. Right. I think we've got enough things that need to be gone over. Charter normally calls for every eight years, which would be 2021. And I think with the reason for situations that we've encountered that maybe we need to do it a little sooner. Council, discussion on that one? Is that a motion or? I'll make it a motion that we entertain a charter review committee. Second. Second. Mr. Last Lowry. question. Yes. Charter Review Committee, that's made up of strictly citizens, correct? No one on strictly council. Strictly citizens, but I. I didn't know if anyone on council was allowed or not. Well, I would recommend that possibly we may put a couple of people. I would think that we need to put a couple of people from council on there to kind of guide them with no voting rights. The voting would be done strictly by those that we appoint as charter review members in this city. It would come before us ultimately. Yes. To, to be placed, or to be accepted or placed on the ballot. To be correct? placed and accepted on the ballot. And I think at that point, we need to do a little bit better job of explaining to people why these changes are needed. In the past, it's just been strictly a ballot language which left a lot to be desired. I remember the last charter review we had, it's like 70 30. Mr. Lindsay, your comment? The, uh, I think the current charter, and I could be wrong, I, I think there's nothing in the current charter to have counsel on the, on it, on the committee. I there's think nothing it, in it, no. I, I think it's strictly for citizens. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, uh, I don't know legally if anybody from council can actually be on that since the current charter is what we have to follow. It does not specify that. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I Mr. don't. Mr. Lowry has knowledge. We, we, yeah, I don't. We're the seniors up here, uh, and it's never been done that way before. Not that, I'm, not that I'm not that I know. I mean, because of it, like Mr. Cook said, it ultimately comes before us anyway. Yes. Yeah. So. Before it goes ever goes to the ballot, right. it comes to us to either approve it or disapprove it or send it back or whatever is my understanding. You don't give up your rights as a citizen when you run for council. All right, thank you. Please. Sorry, any other comments on this? <laughs> no. Mrs. Berner. Okay. Um, Shammy's second. second, correct? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Lowry. Uh, we're voting on to form uh, the charter, charter review. Charter review. Well, actually, I was going to ask one more oh, question. Yeah, How are we going to, to to form a charter review committee? What do we do if we vote on this and no one wants to volunteer? Well, then we unvote it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the but we just don't do anything. anything. <laughs> I know how hard it is to get volunteers for things, so. Yeah. I mean, does that, what would that do if we were to pass this and not follow through with it? Then we would just make a motion to disband the committee, I would guess, if, yeah. you know, if you don't. We, I, I know it's required that we have five citizens and council, five. Yeah. the council selects, <laughs> let's say we get 50 applications, Council would then select the five people on the commission. Okay. Right. That's uh, what I was going to ask. So, Mrs. Yes. Good <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, we're back to voting? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Yes. Cook? Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Oh, yes. Motion accepted 5 0. <clears throat> um, we need a motion to go into executive session Mr. to discuss Mayor. collective bargaining matters. Mr. Uh, Lindsay. I move we go into executive session to discuss collective bargaining matters at this time. Second. All right. Ms. Chief Trustee. Yeah. If can I say one thing before you guys go yes. into this section? Um, and one reason because it'll happen before the next uh, city meet. Um, we had the heritage flight this weekend and then also the week right after that, beginning of the, uh, actually the 7th, but the 8th, is fire prevention week and remind everybody about detectors, CO detectors. But on Saturday the 13th from 1 to 4, we will be doing a fire department open house at the station uh, with the uh, events for the kids, uh, things out for the kids. Um, probably have some treats, that type of thing also for the adults and kids. Uh, one of the things that we are going to be doing this year is uh, doing a burn house, which actually what it is, it's a small house that's made up, looks just like a house, has windows and everything, uh, slide windows, uh, and the firefighters will actually catch the house on fire inside. 
and it can will be able to move doors, move walls, and where it will actually show you how smoke travels to a house, uh, how heat how heat travels, uh, why it's important to keep your bedroom door closed, uh, to show how much of a, how quickly the smoke fire will, will move into that room, even though the fire is on the first floor. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty neat little training tool. Um, we'll be doing that with some other things. We're possibly going to try to do an auto extrication. Uh, not sure yet if we're going to be able to do that yet or not, but we'll be having a lot of different things. And also the firehouse will be open, and also the apparatus to break the anyone wants to come in and see them and the, take the kids through them and everything. What day is that? October? It will be the Saturday the 13th from uh, 1 till 4. Uh, you, you know how much I love that. So I've done the fire training with you guys now and cut the person, the body out, the cut, not the, cut the body, sorry, <laughs> cut the glass out of the car. It was so exciting. I loved it. I'm excited to see it happen again. All right. So now we'll vote on executive session. Mrs. Berner. Uh, Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Mm -hmm. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted. Five zero. Now we'll have a five minute recess. So then we'll go into oh, executive okay. session. Okay. okay, Mr. Cook. You move to go back into the regular. Yes. Don't yeah. move. Second. Don't no cook. Any discussion? No. I'd like to go over a few things. Oh. We have time. Who made the second one, Bill Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. 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 I'm going to call the roll. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Am I going the right direction? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lowry. Yes. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. And Vice Mayor Lindsay. Mr. Mayor. Well, now we're back in regular session. We are now back in regular session. Mr. Pat Lindsay. I will defer to Mr. Lowry. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Lowry. <laughs> Mr. Lowry. I'd like to make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs>